Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, Jen. All right. So, hey, everybody. I'm Joe Longo. This is Studio B. Thanks for being here. We are a well tech company bringing wellness to the masses, to the people that need it the most, the people that are working in a cubicle. Um, and we have a beautiful online platform. If you're not aware of us, you can practice with amazing teachers from all over the land, including me, every Wednesday and Friday. So thanks for being here. Jennifer Pasteloff, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Hi. thank you, thank you. Um, so everyone that is here, um, thanks for being here. I thought it would be fun just to kind of chat about um, Jen and, and, and my relationship, how we, how we came to be some, some wonderful, are, amazing- Are you, are you gonna tell them how we met on Tinder and we used to be married or are you gonna leave that part out? No, no, I was gonna start with that. Okay, good, good. Go, go for it, go for it. <laughs> so actually back in the day when Facebook actually used to show people content and you didn't have to pay for it, um, this is like 10 years ago, maybe 11 years ago, long time ago, in a land far, far away. I was just finishing my Kundalini teacher training and I was building this uh, workshop all about manifesting. And all of a sudden, this Jennifer Pasteloff started showing up in my newsfeed talking about manifestation, but being real, like no bullshit, just being real. And I remember a lot of it being like, you, know, you have to do the work. Like you can make a vision board, but are you doing anything? Like, are you actually doing anything? And then as luck would have it, I had no idea, but my first yoga teacher was friends with Jen, good old Diana Vitarelli. Oh, yay! Yeah, and Diana owned Diana Yoga and she was doing this wonderful festival and Jen was gonna be there. And I was so excited, because like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna get to meet this, this weird woman from California that is really like, no bullshit, the real deal. And I was so excited. And then that night your plane was delayed. And like you couldn't, you didn't make it for the for the first class that you were supposed to teach. Oh my God, I don't even remember that. Wow, sometimes my memory scares me. It was like what, a decade ago. Like, okay. And then John, Vitter, John Vitarelli taught your class, but you were teaching the next day. Wait, so and like, it was I'll a get, festival? It was that Diana do yoga thing that she used okay. to do. Okay, I trust you. <laughs> So Jen, you know, was arriving the next day then and was going to teach. And I unfortunately had to photograph a bakery. If you know me, I love cake. So I'm like, shit, I, I can't not go to this job photographing cakes because I'm going to eat a lot of cake today. And I figured I would just get to the festival whenever. And I got there a little late. Jen's class was already started. And I'll never, ever, ever forget this. I walk in just being kind of like with my camera to do what I'm supposed to do. And she turns around and she's like, oh my God, is that Joe Longo? And she literally stopped class and came over and gave me this big hug like I've oh known in my whole life. And I was like, holy shit. Uh, and I was just like, wow, wow. And then you're and like, no, actually I'm Steven, but hi. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Like, you remember Tinder last night, come on. Um, and you know, she taught a great class and then Jen being Jen and super busy, she was like, I gotta go. And I'm like, I wanna take your picture. She's like, I gotta go. I'm like, I just need five minutes. And we took the elevator ride down. Oh, okay, no. Yeah, with the, the straight yeah. pants and... Oh, um, okay. And Jen was all in a rush and we hop in the elevator and I literally had like five minutes with her. And it was one of those times that I feel I look back on that the universe like puts you in a position. And it's like, are you actually going to like, take action, put inspired action in, or are you just gonna be like, hey, you're pretty cool. And that was it. And I'm like, fuck this, I'm photographing this woman because I don't know if I'm ever gonna see her again. And we do this awesome photo shoot in an elevator as we're going down to the, for Jen to catch her ride. And we literally, it's five minutes, super fun photos. And as Jen's ride is coming up, she looks at me and was like, hey, don't tell anybody. I'm going to meet with Good Morning America tomorrow. I'm about to blow the fuck up and I'm taking everybody with me. I did not say that I'm about to. Yes, you fucking up. did. So oh, sorry for all the curses. You fucking did. No, I didn't. I really Yes, said you that. did. It was 10 years no. ago. You did. Okay. And That's you said, so I'm funny. taking everybody with me. It wasn't like, <laughs> look at me, I'm blowing up. It was like, I'm blowing up and I'm taking everybody with me. Oh my God. And I look back at that and I'm like, she didn't lie. She took everybody with her. She took me 
with her. Those photos in the elevator like propelled me to a different level of photography. And yeah, it just set me up. with me is my, is my jam. You got it. It is. You got it. It is. And then I had this gift of being around Jen. Because again, luck would have it. And I ended up being in California when she was doing a retreat in Ojai. And you were like, you can come, but you have to sleep in the, in the yoga space. And I'm like, I don't care if I have to sleep in the yoga space. So and the first did. night I slept. It's funny, I've, I've done so many now that everything starts to like, I forgot, I know you came to Italy. And I was like, oh, I forgot you came to Ojai. But it all, yeah. it all like melts in with years and faces. Well, sure, and, like, when you do so much. Um, but it was at, at that Ojai trip where there was a lovely bunch of ladies celebrating their birthday. You remember them? They wouldn't shut up. <laughs> Wait, there was a, there was a what? A group of ladies that came to the retreat not knowing what to expect and they were celebrating someone's birthday. Are you talking about the ones that left and went to the Ojai Valley Inn? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's classic. Yeah. Like, they, but it was like, so they, great they because... Were just, they, were like, they were like the real... I mean, I've never... I have to say, no judgment, because I know people love it, but I've never watched those Real Housewives show, but they were those. They were them. And they were like in high heels. And it was like, oh, my God. Literally, we're like in the woods, you know? <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, they, I was not there. They were not my people. I was not there. They were like, "Bye, we're going to the Ojai Valley Inn, where it's you know like fifteen hundred dollars a night." Bye. But it was great because they left, and then I got their room. Yes. So, right. so I went from sleeping in the yoga space to having a private room at this. I think it was a yurt. Like I'm in this yurt in Ojai. I'm like, what? What the hell is happening? Oh, and crazy. things like that just kept kept rolling with us. And then I ended up in Italy. I'm like, how am I in Italy? How am I in Italy with 25 ladies that I'm the only dude here? I, I actually, um, I actually just this morning thought, I really want him back and maybe France. And I was gonna reach out to you about that. I mean, you're so busy these days, but France- Everybody hear September. that? Yes, I'm down, I'm there. <laughs> September 19 to 26, France. Oh, my niece is getting married on the 18th. Wait, wait, you're getting married on the 18th? No, no, my niece. My niece is oh. getting married. But Where? I can come a day late in the Poconos. Yeah, you totally could. So oh, we'll talk about it when we're not, <laughs> you know, live streaming. We'll, we'll work that out. But after all of these, you know, random interactions with Jen, I remember being somewhere and I'm like, if Jen ever did a teacher training, I would do a teacher training with Jen because I have issues with teachers, <laughs> just the way I am. And now like many years later, I look back and I'm like, holy shit, like Jen is like one of my biggest teachers, especially now with coaching and the way that I work with people. I'm like, I got all of this from, from Jen and photographing her and realizing like, she let me into this cocoon of, just beautiful divine feminine energy and there are so many times I looked around the room and I'm like this feels super weird and super awkward but I really am the luckiest man alive right now to like yeah, to be you 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 certainly have that super divine uh, feminine energy you're not you know uh and and that's not a slight or anything but you're so able to tap into it and a lot of men aren't and that's why that's why I invited you and I allowed you in it because it's sacred and a lot of a lot of you know w women and people who come ask and I say I sometimes men do come I mean I vet them but like you because you're so comfortable with that part of you it's been you were you were one of us <laughs> right I learned so much and damn it was scary it was scary um so that's a little bit of, of Jen and, and, my, and our, our my past and how we're we're connected and here and we've got Jen's book. And, you know, if we just go back a little bit to when I said Jen was like, I'm taking everybody, everybody with me. Quick plug for me. Oh, yeah. That's my picture. <laughs> I took that picture. And I remember when he sent me the message like, hey, I need this picture. And I'm like, what? Are you fucking with me? <laughs> and, it, and it's um, not, it's funny. It's not like an author photo. It's like the most random picture. But I just, that was in 2015. Charlie was in my belly. I didn't know it. Or though I did, I think, but mm -hmm. um, I love those captures. And so even though it's not like your typical author photo, I was like, ask me if I care, put it on there anyway. <laughs> right, and that's been the beauty, I think, of everything. It's really like, ask me if I care, like I'm doing what I wanna do. 
right? I'm being real. I'm being my most authentic self. So for everyone that's here, because we really just kind of jumped in, if you don't know Jen, if you didn't read Jen's bio, Jen has really been everywhere from Good Morning America to New York Magazine to Health Magazine, CBS News. Um, you're the founder of the Manifestation Station. That was the blog that sucked well, me in. Well, you know what? I gotta, I gotta update my bio. I realize every time I do an event, someone reads my bio and I'm like, oh my God, that's so old. So I, I'll do my bio. How's that? Yeah, please. Tell us, who is Jennifer Okay, Pasla? I, I, my name is Jennifer Pasloff. I'm the best-selling author of On Being Human, which is a memoir that came out from Denton Penguin Random House. It's a national bestseller. I said that. I have a podcast called What Are You Bringing? And I am the founder of The Manifestation, which is a literary magazine. And also, yes, I've been on a lot of media outlets, including the cover of Yoga Journal with Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, I am a mommy to a five-year-old. I'm deaf without my hearing aids. I, uh, what else can I say? Did I forget anything? I lead retreats around the world when we're not in a pandemic, but less these days because I realized how amazing online stuff is, especially because of my hearing actually. It streams right into my ears and it's so much less stressful and less work for me than in person, trying to read lips. Um, and I'm also on an app. It's a self-help app called Mind, M-I-N-E-D, twice a week. I do these live sessions. Yeah, that's about it. I think that's the, the majority of, um, that's all. What about what? <laughs> well, I, no, oh, I said, all. Oh, that's all. <laughs> but, but I do now teach a weekly Saturday yoga class called Yoga to Quiet the Inner Asshole. And it's like blowing up because it's so fun. So some people come on Zoom and some people come in my yard and it's just wonderful. Um, and there was one more thing I'm forgetting, but, oh, and I'm the creator of Shame Loss. Shame Loss, which is um, instead of weight loss, I suck shame loss. And it's just putting shame down, at least for today. I think that's it for right now. That's, let's let's that's, go with that's that. That's a lot. Sure. So, you know what I wanted to ask you about a little bit? Maybe we can talk about your book came out in 2019. Apocalypse happens. Everything gets shut down. And it's like everything that you were doing really yeah. stopped. And then I'm curious, where did the IG lives come in? Like, how did that come to existence of you? Were like, I'm going to start going live on IG and I'm going to start raising money for people for, to get food and to do really anything that you can do to support people through it. Yeah. How did good question. Yeah. So when COVID hit, you know, I fell apart. I, everything disappeared. I'm the breadwinner and every, you know, every dollar I make is from live in person stuff. And it, it all went and I got very depressed. I, you know, I, I deal with depression and so it wasn't out of the blue and um but one of the ways that I that I saved my life many times before and that I really found meaning was by asking how may I serve which essentially Wayne Dyer taught me so when the pandemic hit I remember you know I, I posted on my Instagram at one point um do you have enough food to eat and it wasn't because I thought like I would be able to feed everyone because I could barely feed my own family, but it, because I knew this community that I had fostered and built and nurtured, they take care of each other. And they did. And people started jumping in and, and um, you know, I'll get you groceries and I'll do this. And it was beautiful to watch. And then one of my followers um, reached out to me and said, do you want me to create a GoFundMe? Because it seems like a lot of work for you to like, because I was like the middleman. They'd send me money and I, and we did. And then I started um, doing these Instagram lives with celebrities and asking people to donate to the GoFundMe. And then from that, we sent people money, like $100 to get groceries. So the Instagram lives were incentive for people to donate but really it was the it was the how may i serve it was like okay that and it's again it saved my life i was so depressed so it gave me a, 
a purpose each day and it gave me something to do and focus on, you know, until of course, part of it was a distraction. It wasn't, you know, I, what am I going to do with my own life now? I'm totally screwed. And and then finally, you know, a few months later I thought, okay, I need to figure out how I'm going to pay the bills. But, um, <laughs> but it, it really came from the, from how may I serve and from the, I got you, right. I got you. Let's do this. What do you need? What do you need? And of course we can't save everyone, which is, you know, sometimes hard to stomach because I try, but, <laughs> but <laughs> it was really beautiful to watch. And all these celebrities, it was so cool, you know, because people were home and I'd be in my bedroom and like laundry behind me and toys. And it was just so real and people just talking two humans talking and a lot of money got raised. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And and again, it's like definitely one of the things that I connected with you from the get go is just the realness of it. Right. Yeah. And then with like the more time I spent with you and, and like your great little one liners, you know, like, don't be an asshole. Mm-hmm. Not that hard. Right. Just, just don't be an asshole. Um, and one line that I, I probably if you've ever taken a workshop with me, you've probably heard me say this and, and I always quote you. But it's the shoulda, woulda, coulda, shut up. And it, it just sticks with me because us silly humans make all of these excuses. I could have done that. I should have done that. And you're like, yeah, you should have, you could have, you would have. But why don't you just shut up and just do <laughs> something? Right? That's the way I take it. It's like, cool. All right. We addressed all the excuses. Now get out of your own way and actually make shit happen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the, right? show, the yeah, I mean, it's a, and, that, and that's a very, that's my default self. That's my inner asshole. I have to constantly put that voice down. Okay, you know, it's all right. I didn't, I wish I had, I should have, if only I, you know, but I didn't. Here I am now, this is what is so, now what? <laughs> right, right. And how can you, how can you be human? Which is another thing that I totally connect with because I think sometimes in this world, we get a little bit lost and it's like, oh, well, I'm supposed to be saying this mantra and I'm supposed to be doing this. And maybe if I go live in a cave, I'm going to be more spiritual and more holy. And, and you're just like, how about this? How about we're just, we just accept the fact that we're human and yeah, be the best never, version I'm of never yourself. Gonna go live in a cave. <laughs> I mean, I try not to have, I try, try not to have too many shoulds that doesn't mean that i succeed at that but i I really really try for that and um did you catch yourself being like ah shit like when you're slack because i think all of us you know we we go through phases especially with what we've all been through like this phase of remembering and forgetting and remembering and forgetting no i know i never catch myself joe i never fuck up i'm (laughs) pretty like i'm done i mean you're perfect uh, yeah, no, every day, every <laughs> single day, every day, every day. Um, you know, that's why I talk so much in my own coaching and all the work I do about daily practices. It's an, it's an everyday thing because like, great. I'm, I'm, I feel great today and I'm being of service and, and then I wake up tomorrow and I feel like poop and, you know, it's every single day. Yeah. I catch myself every day. Um, you know, slipping into fear or listening to my inner asshole or um, being in scarcity mentality and, and every day. But now I have tools and sometimes the tools don't work, but mostly they do. All right. And it's a, it's a practice for for everyone that's here. Can you um, describe to us what is what is the inner asshole? Not yours, inner- but like in general. The inner asshole is that voice that tells you, I mean, ultimately, I think, I think it, you know, it thinks it's protecting us. So we have to have compassion for it. That's really a new thing that I'm working on. But it's the voice that tells you, you can't, you're too late, you're not enough, you should be quiet, you shouldn't take up space, you know, whatever, whatever uh, non-supportive, minimizing kind of thoughts we have um bullshit stories about ourselves or the way the world is you know um that's your inner asshole uh, How, I, um, well, oh no go on i i don't i was just expanding on the 
ridiculous things the inner asshole says. And yeah, the inner asshole is really <laughs> unoriginal and really ridiculous and boring. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, I feel you're very open, right? Like you really don't hold back. Have you always been like that? Like early gen before like the yoga teaching and everything happened? Yeah. Like were you kind of always like, hey, listen? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> like really owning I mean, your, like owning your, your truth the way you do. Yeah, and ultimately I think, you know, look, personalities don't change inherently, right? There's something to be said for personality. So my personality is essentially similar to what it was more so now yeah i have less shame i'm older you know i've been doing this work for so long with groups of people where it holds me so accountable and keeps me so congruent you know to to be who i say i want to be but yeah i always was that way and i don't know why i don't care why it's like i yeah it's the way i am did i <laughs> did i used to have a lot of did i used to have a lot of shame yes did i hide yes i don't anymore but so yeah, I've always with, been open. With the not hiding, was there something that you found that, that really worked for you to to release the inner asshole, to be to step more into your truth, more into your most authentic self, besides just doing the work every day? Well, I think when I started writing again about a decade ago, like really writing and writing essays and personal essays and sharing about grief and hearing loss and anorexia and, and scarcity mentality and all the things and how terrifying it was and, and thinking, oh my God, people aren't going to come to my yoga classes. Like, cause back then I, I cared about that, you know, cause that's how I was making my money uh, mm -hmm. or they're not going to like me or, or they're going to whatever story I made up and the opposite happened, you know, people were thanking me and, and I would see that it was um, helping people that gave me confidence. And every time I was like, okay, so everything that I, that I thought I should hide is actually the thing that draws people to me and that makes people fall in love with me and relate to me. And so um, a lot of it came with just, practice i guess and just doing the thing and 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 sharing um but it, it really is a daily thing like i wouldn't it's not like i've gotten rid of my inner asshole you know i every day I do every day i go be quiet you know some days it's louder mm -hmm. um <clears throat> excuse me i would love to because i know there are a bunch of people on the call really open it up to everyone that's here to see if anybody has any questions for you or anything that they just want to put out to uh, really open the conversation up to everybody. Are you okay with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm because... afraid my computer might die if I, if I, I'm going to have to recharge it, but <laughs> yeah, ask me anything. So anybody uh, on the call want to jump in and ask a question, share, don't be shy, don't be shy. I have a question. Yeah. Go for it. Hi, Jen. I'm Mariah. Hi, Mariah. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm also one of the facilitators at Studio B, and I'm excited to be talking Yay! to you in person. <laughs> um, I'm. I think I'm thinking out loud as I'm asking my question. Um, listening to you speak right now and also knowing and having seen what you share on instagram i i feel there is a lot of good in that and that it's actually making a difference in the world um at the same time there's also so much going on on instagram that may not serve um the greater good so much and especially um what i'm what i'm hearing from friends that have kids that you know especially children that get very influenced by what is happening on instagram and that they should be the way some influencers are and um so would you speak a little to your how you see that like the power yeah. of instagram the good versus the bad of that sure sure well well first of all I, you know i joke i say i'm like the anti-influencer um 
I I absolutely I'm very transparent. Now, does that mean that I share everything with everyone? Hell no. And anyone that thinks I do, like, let them think that. Like, there's, you know, most things I don't share. And what I do is a conscious choice. But I I specifically um, don't, you know, have that influencer thing or this curated kind of approach because I go, this is who I am. I, you know, I live in this small apartment. This is, this is who I am. This is my body. This is me. Um, as an example of what, you know, what it means to be utterly yourself. I think, um, it, it does, it does get dangerous to see these, you know, my son's only five, but gosh, I worry these overly curated what, what what looks like perfect lives and i worry that people feel that they don't measure up or live up to that which is why i double down on like this is me this is the real me i mean that's all i can do i can't control i can mute those people because they get on my last nerve which i do i don't follow any of that bullshit. but but i can only double down on my own integrity I can only double down on me. No, does that mean I just want to share a beautiful photograph or no, but I don't, um, I don't pretend to be something I'm not. I don't try to, uh, I don't sell anything I don't believe in, you know, I don't, um, portray myself in a way that isn't true. So that's all I can do. So I just, I double down on my own integrity with, with, what's real and with a lot of levity like the other day was international selfie day and i i was like oh i posted a picture of myself picking my nose i mean my hand was really far up there and it wasn't like i sat there and i thought about it and i i mean it was so impulsive you know and i thought like i thought about how like if like an influencer did that to be funny they probably would take like 700 of them and like pick which one was the you know and so i just i really just try to be um me and spontaneous and And with the awareness that a lot of people, for whatever wacky reason, do follow me and listen to me. So I I do my best to to stay in integrity with who I say I am, which is someone who doesn't want to hide anymore from shame, which is someone who has a sense of humor, which is someone who, you know, um, believes in pleasure. You know, so I I really try to show up as I am. Um, and as far as the, as the other shit, I, I, you know, I have to mute it and not look at it. And, uh, I don't think there's anything more I can do about that. I mean, I make fun of it in my own mind, but (laughs) I think ultimately it really comes down to how, how are we using our tools? And again, going way back, you know, to before we were all using Instagram and we were all on, um, Facebook, like Jen, I remember you sending like personalized Facebook messages saying, hey, I just wrote this great, there's a blog post that I'm really proud of, can you share it? And mm-hmm. I remember like, wow, like seeing someone actually ask for help as well and like build this community where it was just like, all right, like I'm proud of this, will you put, will you help get it get it out? And seeing that happen. And even when the book was happening, we're like, all right, I, ne- I need my PR team, who wants to Well, I mean, me? let, let's be clear, anyone who's written a book knows you do, and I, and I was really, um, I am really good at that, asking for help. I'm going to, I'm going to get the cord. I am really good at that. <laughs> and, um, and I hope that that reminds people that, that it doesn't have to be a shameful thing. I think so many people have, have um, stories. Like I'm so many people say, see this right now, this is real motherfucking life, right? This getting this cord. <laughs> So many people have like, oh, I'm terrible at asking for help. Ooh, I couldn't. And if, if you if you break it down to why, it's always like, most times, what will they think? What will people think? And um, and so, I openly, not only do I ask for help, but I share about it and I talk about it because I think it's it's like let's normalize this. Let's remind each other, I got you. That's my tattoo, and that's why that campaign where we raised all that money worked so well it was the it was the asking for help it was the coming together like nothing gets done alone yeah you write the book on your own fine but um that to me is really important to remind people that that 
what is that expression? Like we rise, well, there's so many, like we rise by lifting each other and that we're better together. And, you know, and people are scared of that sometimes, I think, uh -huh. for various reasons. Sure, sure. It's definitely scary to ask for help. And uh, again, it's like right at the beginning of my venture into this world, like I feel so lucky that you showed up at the same time and I'm watching you literally ask for help. So then when I was doing things, I was more open to say, hey guys, could you help me? Could you share this with your friends? Like, will you put the word out? Um, and I knew it was okay. Like I felt like yeah. it was okay. Like I didn't have to be shameful and knowing that my community, I got you, right? Like we're all gonna help each other. We're all gonna support each other. Well, so I'm I gonna think, pull I back again. Oh. What? Well, I, I think another no, one ahead. of the fears, the, uh, another one of the fears besides asking for help and, you know, what will they think or possibly getting rejected because you might, you might ask and someone says no, is the fear of there's not enough. Like, well, if I, if I help them or share them, there's not enough for me. And that's really what I work every day of my life to um, remind myself of. Uh -huh. There's there definitely enough. enough. Yeah, so much. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had Robert Sturman on. And, oh, cool. you know, as I was inter introducing him, I'm like, you know, Robert and I became friends because of Jennifer's blog, the Manifestation Station from the Q&As that you used to do back in the day. And now Robert, like I look back and like Robert is one of my, my best friends. And then being able to reach out the same, be like, hey, can you help me? Can you help me? And knowing that it's okay, knowing that we're in the same profession, shooting the same exact thing, like from the same exact community, and knowing that there's enough for all of us. Like Robert and I don't have to compete. That's what I'm talking enough. about. That's that's what I'm talking about. And that takes faith. And that takes, especially if like me, you grew up with a severe loss as a child. So everything has pointed to the fact that there is not enough, that things get taken away, you know, just reminding yourself and and the way we do that is by supporting each other and just keep doing it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so i wanted to pull back again and see if anybody anybody else wants to jump into our conversation Sa sarah paula paula you're unmuted so you can go first okay um so i mean you're reading your book loving it sarah there's Yay. my card um so in your book, you describe your relationship with your mother, and it's not always smooth sailing, to say the least. I wonder how um, that impacts your mothering presently, and you know if you have any advice on that. Yeah. Wow, that's a good question. I mean, my mom and I talk 800 times a day, and uh, it's complicated, as all relationships are. Um, it's impacted my mothering a lot because I always feel, I always felt that my mom, my mom had a lot of trauma, a lot of abuse, physical, sexual, and verbal. And so she's got really bad ADHD. And my whole life, I felt like my mom didn't listen. And then so like the refrain of my whole life was like, mom, are you listening? Mom, are you listening? So my, I'm like, my son talks and I'm like, because I never want him to feel that way. Now, of course, I fuck up a lot because I realize like my phone's always in my hand. And so there's that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of ways in, um, that it informs me. But, you know, I think having my own child made me so much more compassionate toward my mother as did writing my book and, and understanding like, all that she went through. It's hard when you're a kid and a teenager and even 20s and 30s, you know, but all that she went through, like really having compassion, um, but it absolutely informs how I mother. And I think I'm a great mom. Uh, I mess up sometimes, like I said, because I work a lot, you know, like my son will say things like, mommy's always working. And I think, shit, I don't want him to grow up and have that stuck in his head. So but yeah, I don't know if that answered your question ish. It was, it was so, an interesting answer. Is there's your next book, right? You can talk about mothering. Yeah, Very well, important. my next book's about being right on time in your life. If I 
get cracking on it. <laughs> <laughs> if you get to be in right on time. Um, I mean, I just, what? you know, it's easy to fill your day with like, you know, coaching and podcasts and like all of a sudden it's like, well, where's my time for being creative? And, and it's, 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 it's on me. I'm the one that's, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. One thing I, I want to just throw in there really quick, how you said about Charlie saying, mommy's always working, but mommy's always working, but you're there, oh, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a little different than mommy's always working and mommy's not here, right? So in a way you can look at it like you're teaching Charlie how you could literally work anywhere and yeah. do anything, and right? It's, it's really cute because I had to come up with the bio the other day and I just, ugh. And so I said, Charlie, <laughs> can you do mommy's bio? And he said, what's a bio? And I, and I explained it. And so, you know, we hit, I hit record and he was like, mommy lives in Ojai, which did I even tell you that I bought a house? No. Oh, uh, oops, I did. So um, <laughs> congratulations. He said, mommy, lives, I'm in my apartment now, but he's like, mommy bought a house mommy works mommy works and makes money and i said well mo what does mommy do when she works and he goes she talks to the people and i said well, what do i do when i talk to the people he says she you she, you communicate with them i never Aww. taught him that word <laughs> yeah. oh that's beautiful sarah i think you had a question yeah, it's and it's actually it dovetails quite beautifully with Paula's question. Um, Jen, I'm curious, you know, being a mom and having this like empowered relationship with your inner asshole, you know, like, like, you know, getting a handle on it. Are there ways that you're intentionally instilling that with Charlie or are, is it just kind of because obviously he witnesses so much of just what you do, like being with you. But I'm curious if you have any like intentional. I have three boys, so I'm always curious about That's how like such other a good mom question. Is doing, <laughs> other moms are doing it. That's such a good question. You know, he's five, so it's not coming up so much yet. It's it's. I don't know. I don't know how old are your boys. Uh, Fourteen. No. Okay. Oh my gosh. Fifteen. <laughs> he's going to be sixteen this year. Fifteen, eleven, and four. Okay. Yeah. So the 11 and the 15 year old, but the four and five, you know, he's not, he's not, I, I don't see him saying anything bad about himself ever or right. right. So there's not, and so I try to model it in my own way of being, I do catch myself sometimes. I'll say something, you know, crappy to myself about myself out loud. And I, and I think, oh my God, I don't ever want him to hear me, you know, um, doing that. But I absolutely will. It just, it hasn't really presented him, itself with him yet because he's so confident and he loves himself so yeah. much. I mean, every day, you know, every day I tell him like, what do you love about me? And I tell him what I love about him. And, you know, so we, we, um, we talk a lot about everything, but I don't necessarily tell him about that, like inner asshole voice. Cause it doesn't, it's not there yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I got a little time before That's he fair. starts like, but awesome. that's a great, great, great question. You know, talk to me when he's, you know, a little bit old, like a little older. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. I'd love to pop in with a question. Um, I think I want to circle back to, I loved what you said about doubling down on your own integrity. Um, you're probably hearing Legos in the background. I apologize for that. No, don't apologize. Um, um, I think the... One of the recurring kind of friction points in my life that's really tough, just to be honest, is um, around when doubling down on your personal integrity causes harm um, and real suffering for other people. Can you give me an example of what you mean? Uh, I mean, I'll be really transparent. Um, I come from a really deeply embedded, uh, found fundamentalist Christian background, which is okay. not my own personal view. Um, okay. and, um, I have family coming to visit for the first time since COVID they'll be here for the longest that they've been since I was 15 and moved out. Um, and there's an expectation that, um, we will be in a form of formal service, which is not something that our family practices, but is literally for them. It is a life or death issue. 
it causes exactly. them to worry for my mortal soul. And it's not something that's ever going to go away because it is the foundation of their life. Okay. And then I have two children who it also reflects upon because then they worry about them. And so we have done this dance for years where we have the boundary of distance because we live a country away where we don't have to talk about it much because we don't live close together, but we're potentially moving closer and they're coming to visit. And it's not something we have distance to navigate for us anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what, what is, um, sometimes your greatest contribution in life comes with your ability to say no, which is in a, is it's about boundaries. And I know that word is used so much and it's, it's hard, but you, you get to, you get to be happy. You get to live your life how you want. And so it's setting that boundary and if they can't be with that, I mean, that's, and yeah, I get that. I get that. It sucks and it's hard, but your priority is your, your children and, and you, and it is hard, but it's not impossible. I understand. I completely understand what you're saying though. It's like, okay, so I'm, I'm setting this boundary and I'm, and I know it's hurting them, but I have to do it where in another universe, maybe you would have let it go. be like, okay, it's only a couple of weeks. I just want them to be happy. And like, no, no, I know it's hard. I know. But if you don't, you don't want that for your kids, right? No, I, it feels like personal abandonment. It's reached the point where it feels like I'm literally having to abandon a lot of my own core beliefs to do yeah. this. Yeah. And, um, and yet I know the harm that it's going to cause when I say I can't do this. This isn't a place that I can show up and be myself. Um, and that will never go away because they will forever for their whole life be trying to convert and save me. Fine, but w w when you say the harm that it'll cause, first of all, it's not going to cause them physical harm. Yeah. Right? Like they're not going to die. They're not going to keel over and die, right? When you're like, I can't, like, but like they're, it's not going to spontaneously make them die. So yeah. it's going to cause them harm. And, and, but then we have to really have to go, well, well, is it really? I mean, I guess they're, they're going to worry, but again, that's on them. At some point, you're not, you're not a little girl anymore. You know, you're not, you don't have to live under the uh, thumb or the beliefs of your parents or, or whoever it is, but, um, it, it's, it is, it's really, really hard. You can still love them and go and, and no, no, this, no. <laughs> Double down on, on myself and keep breathing. <laughs> it, it, I'd love to jump in uh, on this as well because my family, evangelical Christians. So growing up, I'm the youngest of six kids and growing up, I've always kind of been like, oh, Oh, no, this is really doesn't feel like the kind of Jesus love that I'm feeling. And I'm like, I have, there's a group of my family that are, they're trying to save my soul because they think that I'm going to, you know, burn in hell. And I always bring it back to love. And I'm like, we may not believe the same thing, but we do believe in love. And really, ultimately, if we look and but it's, it's taken, you know, 46 years of those conversations with my family to, to get there and be like, we might not see it the same way, but you might say, pray, I might say, meditate. You might say yeah. this and I'm, you know, and it's just like really being like loving, like how can we love more? How can we show up more and just be like, I'm okay, right? And this is what I believe and you can believe what you believe, but, and this is where I always get my parents. If we're going to play <laughs> that God created everything, then God created everything and there is no wrong way. So. Yeah, and and they may not be able to hear that. Like they may not be able to hear. Oh the, right, exactly. Yeah, because people, <laughs> you know, they know what they know. They know what they know, and so you have to keep knowing what you know. So again, doubling down on your own integrity. I think I say that a lot when I think about feeling disappointed by people, which is like when I hate it more than anything or let down, you know. And. And so then I always go, well, I can't change the fact they said they show up and they, or they didn't or they, you know, but I can look at where I do that and double down on my own integrity of keeping my word of showing up. Yeah, 
we can just keep showing up. Yeah. What what's up, Zoom Zoom Land? Anybody else want to jump into our conversation? Don't be shy. I do. Can I just add to that last one? Uh, I struggle with my my dad in that same situation, and I've come to the point where I work on like integration. Like I know what works for me, and I know what works for you. Mm, and I think so. Good. And this is what I. I say to him when the talk comes up, I was like, we're not going to end on the same page. So I think what lacks is respect. I want you just to respect where I'm at and I respect where you're at. And it's a conversation that we can't have. Oh, that's so, so beautiful. I, yeah. Like, how do you like, you know, Joe taught me to walk around in that ball of light the whole time. But how do you take that into the real world and just, you know, not let it uh, stick to you all the time? You know, because yeah. sometimes you come home and you're like, I just, I got to shake it off and take a nap and recharge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's hard because I feel like we're always, uh, or we were taught to pick a side. Yes. Uh -huh. And I think really bringing it right back, like right back on being human. Can we all, can we just be human, right? And really in, embrace this, this meat suit that we're in that we take for granted for so much because like we're trying to be so many things for so many people, like, can we just be? And really, we're all gonna make mistakes. We're all gonna mess up. I almost wore my shirt that says, love the dumbass because at one point in our life, we've all been dumbasses and we've all needed love and it's like, how can we be sure to love the dumbass? We've all been there. I love that. Thanks. Thanks. Um, don't be shy, everybody else that's here. Jump on in. We only have a couple minutes left. <laughs> so Anyone? since we only have a couple. Uh, since we only have a couple of minutes left, Jen, what do you have going on? Because you actually are doing things in real life, again, with people. There's some retreats going on. Plug, plug what you have happening. <laughs> Let the world know. <laughs> um, well, I, I coach a lot now. I'm a coach to quiet your inner asshole. So I, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I'm working on my next book. I teach yoga on Saturdays on Zoom or if you're in Ojai in person. And um, I created something called Shame Loss, which um, it just completed, but it's going to start up again. And yeah, in September, I'm doing Italy and then France back to back, baby, which is not necessarily my preference, but because of COVID, everything got postponed and it's the only way I can kind of make them up. So, um, so yeah, but I'm, I'm going to really kind of chill out this summer and not work as much because I've been working my tushy off for quite some time and uh i got burnt out which is not a great place to be so no. i'm gonna mm -mm, <laughs> tap into my creativity but yeah doing a lot of coaching oh and i have a um you know my retreats i do around the world i do them online now i have one coming up starting july 11th the on being human virtual retreat which is phenomenal phenomenal and um, i, so I really much, I, I was just going to say, I can't recommend doing one of Jen's retreats or workshops because uh, holy shit, like it will open you up in so many amazing ways that it just, it pushes you, it provokes you, it like breaks you brand new in such a beautiful way. And as you're doing all the scary stuff, because there's scary things, and I talk about this a lot and, and the workshops that I teach, like Jen will make you write a letter to yourself in the workshop. And then she'll make you stand up and read that fucking letter out loud. And it's like, oh my goodness, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't, uh-uh, I, I was not ready. But, but, but it's so great because then people- Oh, it is. It's so great. People get to witness you in, in such a different way, you know, because the inner asshole didn't write the letter, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so and great. I will say this, for every, uh, you know, workshop that I was in, um, Every time, every person that read Jen got up and sat down right in front of them. 
yeah. and was just so, there. Mm-hmm. But and that's I, because of my hearing, because I have to um, like, <laughs> be in your face. Re- I mean, it's true. Well, right, can but I it's ask, still. Can well, I yes, ask a question you can. really quick? <laughs> So I read your book when it just came out and it was one of, and I was actually hosting a retreat in Costa Rica for the first time. And it was such an inspiration. And one of the things that surprised me the most was the fact of how you kind of shifted the ways of retreats versus just like meditating yoga, where you created this safe space of people opening up and writing these letters and going beyond and like really tapping in to their vulnerability and you creating that safe space as someone that's also an instructor and trying to create community and that safe space for people to be vulnerable and open up. What, like, how do you make that happen? You know, versus like us being doubling down with our own integrity and showing our community, our rawness, you know, the good, the bad and all that. But I don't know, like, what are tips that you could yeah. give us to be like, how do we dive deeper within our own community and give our people that space to well, have these conversations? I mean, a, a cup, one of my answers you're probably not going to love, which is, it's just my superpower. <laughs> it's just like, you know, great like, answer. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not good at like most things in life, like really. And I don't say that to be self-deprecating, but what I'm good at, I'm really fucking good at. And I am a master, master at, for whatever reason. And again, I don't care why, because I think spending all the time, like, well, it doesn't matter. I am a master at allowing people to feel safe. Um, and so Joe, you were chuckling when I said it's because of my hearing, but that is why I get close. And so, yeah, the benefit of that, so the shitty thing that I'm deaf, but the gift in it is that because I had to get close and I have to get in people's space, they feel so seen and heard and sometimes terrified for a second, but they feel so um, profoundly listened to. Um, so one, it's my superpower. So that 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 is like nothing that I can teach. And that's why when people have been like, teach on being human and I've never, I spoke hard no, because I don't, I don't think I can. But the other things are, you know, nowadays, I don't really teach yoga. I teach this one class on Saturdays that's like hybrid, Zen Pass, Lop style. But I really took a risk and I decided, you know, I'm a writer and I decided to combine all these things I do and make it a thing. Now, back even like when I did my Costa Rica retreat, there was still more yoga, but now I don't teach, I bring a yoga instructor, it's there, people want it. But so that's not, people don't come in with that kind of expectation, like I'm coming on a yoga retreat. And that was scary for me because I thought, well, how will I get them in the room? So one, letting go of that, but that may not be what you want to do. For me, I was clear. I never really wanted to be a yoga teacher. The other thing is, the, the more trans- comfortable I was with just myself and being transparent, the more other people are. And, and that really, I would say, is the secret sauce. It's also like, you know, really facilitating. I, I bring a lot of levity. Like, so I say the only thing you need is to be a human being and don't be an asshole. So like, <laughs> there's no gossip. There's no clicks. There's, not, there's none of this. You, and Humans are human. Sometimes shit happens. But there's none of this like, stuff that breeds um people feeling unsafe so i don't know if that answers it can you still hear me mm-hmm. oh, okay my, yeah. my things just beeped um yeah no i love it i love that you say that it's your superpower because i honestly believe that everyone's got magic and everyone's got like this magic to i make I, the world I, I know it place. i know it in my bones it's not even it's it's unknowing everyone does Oh, yeah. everybody yeah. does and yeah. and yoga is not my like I you know I joke I'm like I you know I can never do a hand like that was never my thing but it was a way in and I love using the body movement to get people to open up but um but I'm but I also was very clear that that was my intention it was like okay we're coming here to connect to not hide to be seen to listen like to walking and knowing that and so at least nowadays, people come with that knowing. They're not like, oh, what the frick is this? I thought we were doing a hand sham workshop. They come knowing, all right, I'm going to need, you know, 
we're going to go deep, no armor. And I've gotten more comfortable in the beginning. You know, now it's like straight up, just, you know, only sign up if you're into that. And so that's why, like, I vet people beforehand. Why are you interested in spending a week with me? And if someone's like, well, I just want to see Italy or, well, I really want to, you know, learn yoga or well, it's like, oh, well, let me direct you somewhere else. I remember after um, my time with you in Ojai, a couple months later, I was going to be on my first retreat. I was like going to be teaching on a retreat and these two teachers invited me and it was lovely. And they were like, you can teach three classes. And I thought I had like three like classes, like workshop style, like your, like your stuff. And I like had everything planned out and they were like, oh no, you only have an hour. I'm like, what do you mean? I only have an hour. Like I, like we're going deep and they're like no we're going hiking i'm like no no <laughs> that's not this was and i was so thrown off i'm like wait a minute not everybody is doing this not everybody is really going deep and making people actually feel and i'm like oh shit like the hiking was fun but i would have rather been like no we're gonna like actually do and, and do the work and sometimes look sometimes you just want they just want a yoga class you know it depends what people want I'm not oh, out for here, sure. like, every day wanting to make people ball and although, <laughs> although there is a lot of bawling and weeping and snot flying in my stuff, but there is an equal amount of levity and joy and laughter and dance parties and pizzas. And I always make sure that is so, so that it doesn't feel like everything's just heavy and hard. Yeah. So much, so much fun. Ah, well, Jennifer, thank you. Thank I want you. to be very mindful you, of your time. Thank you for, for taking the time for being here. Please, everyone, if you if this is your first experience with Jen, go follow her. Get into Take one my of class her workshops. This Saturday, this Saturday, the link is in my Instagram bio or email me, Jennifer, jenniferpostoloff.com. And I teach this class called Yoga to Quiet the Inner Asshole. And it's delicious. Delicious. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Jen. I love and appreciate you. Love you. Day. This was so Everybody. great. You're all beautiful. So I hope to see you. Keep me posted, everyone. Yes. We'll talk about France. And Joe, call <laughs> I me. I love you. All right.